So, so what high school did you go to? I went to Marycliff, then Gonzaga Prep, because it went co-ed in the middle of my high school. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so you said Fox Theater was your first job? So, yeah, so, so it's actually not true. The a over here on 29th was my really oh, first yeah. job. But right around the same time, I worked at the Fox. So, so what did you do with the Fox? I sold popcorn and candy, and I was an usherette. And I uh, took people to their seats if they were late with a flashlight. So what era was that? Like, what, what movies were coming out around, around there? Um, well, Animal House was this... Well, I went to college for one year in the University of Washington and came back in the summer and worked the whole summer at the Fox, and that was when Animal House played the entire summer. I could recite every line of Animal House when then, I was there. And then you, you get to you work with some of those people, right? A little bit, some of the writers? Um, and... Well, Harold Ramis, who was one of the writers, became a friend later. Wow. And actually, I was in a movie that he did with Al Franken um, called Stuart Saves His Family. And then when I moved to the North Shore of Chicago, he lived there too, so we sometimes run into each other. So that was funny. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. I, when I was maybe 10 years old, living on an Air Force base in Germany, they played Stuart Saves His Family. Um, oh, really? At the base theater, and I, I saw it with my family. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> Probably like it was really, it was kind of, I saw it recently, and I thought, oh, that's such a terrible movie, and it was like, no, that was a sweet movie. I thought it was pretty good. Um, so, uh, what made you want to join the Groundlings? I was working as an accountant. I went to Los Angeles to become an accountant, and I fulfilled my dream. I became an accountant. And then I realized after a couple of years that to go get ahead, I would probably have to um, get an MBA or a law degree. In fact, they were going to pay for part of it if I would, and that would get promoted. And I had this sort of crisis because I just didn't like it very much. And I thought, oh, I'm good at this thing, and I actually have a future, but I just don't like it that much. So I was kind of casting around thinking I want, I must have wanted to perform. I mean, I did plays in high school and for a little while in college, I did kind of a stand up thing. So I saw a review of the Groundling Theater and I had never even been there, but it said they had classes for non-professional actors. If they had not said that, I would never have signed up. And I signed up for a class and as soon as I was in the first class, I knew I had to change my whole life and be an actor. So, so who was in your class? Um, well, my second level class was taught by Phil Hartman, which was, and he became a good friend, of course, until he died. Um, and, well, in my, I can't remember exactly who was in my class, but in my kind of level at the Groundlings, it was me and Lisa Kudrow and Kathy Griffin. Those are probably the big people who made the most name for themselves out of that group. I think I heard Conan was with Lisa Kudrow. At yeah, point. yeah. Was, uh, he wasn't in the Groundlings, but they were dating. Oh, yeah, yeah. So he was always hanging around. Yeah, that's funny. Uh, so, so how do you go from that to then Gremlins? is like, what, like 1990 or 91 or something? Yeah, so I started to... No, I think it's earlier than that. I think I did Gremlins before I did SNL. I got on SNL in the fall of 90. I think that was like 88 or 89, one of my first jobs. And I just auditioned for it, yeah. I'm trying to remember your role. Were you, you were like a... Kind of a nosy neighbor. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have any, any scenes with like the actual gremlins or no? No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, was fair. it was just a few days of work. <laughs> okay. Um, so then, you, okay, so, so what, what takes you from gremlins to the SNL? Audition. Well, that was, of course, S uh, the Groundlings was kind of a feeder group to SNL. Some people would get on SNL. Like, when I was there, Phil Hartman got on SNL. And then John Lovitz, who had gotten on the year before Phil Hartman. But, and Lorraine Newman, of course, was from the Groundlings. So there was a whole tradition of people getting on SNL. And, um, yeah, I mean, they just kept, they sent scouts and they ended up picking me. So it was just a lucky thing. What was your uh, audition? Uh, I did the Pat character. I did this other character called Mia Culpa, who is somebody who just apologizes for everything all the time, no matter what. Um, I did this thing where I did a model where I dressed myself up like a model, but when I talk, I'm obviously a 14-year-old girl, so there's like this incongruity. Um, were, were you nervous? Like, what was that like? like I don't know there? why I don't get nervous. I do get a little nervous. I can't say it's... but. There is something in me that makes me not nervous to audition performing. I just, 
I sometimes feel like my blood pressure goes down when I get on stage. So do you have a, do you have like a favorite cast member to work with and do, do sketches with like? Probably Phil, Phil Hartman. I mean, he was, a, you know, once he was my teacher at the Groundlings, we became pretty close friends. He was like my big brother at SNL. So I, and he was so great. Um, Kevin Nealon became a good friend. He was fun. Um, David Spade actually wrote this wonderful sketch for me. Um, I just did his podcast and we were reminiscing about that. And that was such a nice thing for him to do, to write that for me. Um, that didn't happen very often where one of the male comedians writes a sketch for a female comedian. Um, yeah, I mean, Adam Sandler is still, I still run into him in LA. He's the sweetest guy. Um, but I, yeah, I liked everyone actually. Yeah. Um, is that the Fly on the Wall podcast you were on, or is it a different one, David Spade? Yeah, yeah. Well, well it's him and Dana Carvey. Is that yeah. Fly on the Wall? Okay. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. don't pay attention to the names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, let me think of what else I was going to... I'm just okay. kind of curious. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Phil Hartman, for, for somebody who... I love Phil Hartman, but I yeah. have no idea what he's like as a person. You know oh, he's I mean? the sweetest guy. He was the most responsible... Um, he was always so good. He had a script and he had all the lines and he memorized everything in advance that he could. And he would give tips to people about how to do things and how to read the cue cards without seeming like you were reading the cue cards. Um, and just a real mensch, you know, just a great, sweet guy. Everybody loved Phil. There was nobody that didn't love Phil. Did you, did you enjoy your time at SNL, or was it kind of nerve-wracking? or like? It was nerve-wracking, but it was exciting. I mean, I think it's like being in a war. Like, you never forget it. You still have dreams about it your whole life. But, um, but it's also the most exhilarating time, the time when you feel most alive in your life. Like, just, yeah, it was great. Yeah. I just, I, I just love that. This isn't a question, but I, I just love that period so much. That's, you, you hear that from everyone. Like, they, they love the period of SNL when they were kids. And they yeah, were yeah. Like, <laughs> Toons is the driving cat. And oh, Toons is. All that stuff. Like the <laughs> right. weird, absurd stuff. Robert Smigel. Like, oh, oh that Robert Smigel is so stuff, talented. You know? God. <laughs> so how do you go from SNL to then being on... Um... Wait, five-minute warning. Oh, she's got to go to another one? Okay. What's that? Oh, she's got to go to another interview? Yeah. yeah. Okay, jeez. Um... Pulp Fiction. How do you how do you end up in Pulp Fiction? Um, well, Quentin came to the uh, the Groundlings. Quentin came to Saturday Night Live um, with Harvey Keitel. But um, I had heard about Quentin before. I knew about Reservoir Dogs, and we met when he came on the show. And we're both huge film buffs, and we bonded over Japanese movies that we both liked. And we became really close friends, actually. And while he was writing Pulp Fiction, he was calling me. It turns out he was calling a few people, reading what he'd written that day. And he was calling me and reading Pulp Fiction. And he's like, I'm going to put you in this. I'm going to put you in this. And I was like, OK. And so he did, and that was great. It's kind of a weird role. You're just like, you're like the <laughs> junkyard owner's daughter? Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, OK, I got to think what else. Uh, I think we covered a lot of the comedy special stuff in there. We were recording on Yeah, yeah, so okay. You have that. Um, you're on American Gods. Like, who, who do you yeah. play on American Gods? Um, I play, well, it turns out I'm a god. <laughs> you don't know that till the end of my thing, when I get killed. Um, but it's that the gods don't really get killed, because they keep coming back even after they've been killed. Um, I auditioned for it, and Neil Gaiman, I'm a big fan of him, um, and that was probably my favorite job I've ever had on American Gods. That was the most lovely experience doing that show. You, it's, it's hard for me not to have questions that are just like, oh my god, what was it like working on this? <laughs> but Ian McShane is just like... Oh yeah, he's so great. I, I'm, I've seen Dead Wood like probably six times, yeah. so it's hard not to... Yeah, I actually didn't, we talked a lot, but I didn't have any scenes with him. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Um, Okay, I'm trying to think. Uh, how often are, are you back here in Spokane? Usually I come about four times a year, although since the quarantine, I've only come once a year. Hmm. Okay, and do you still have family here? Or yeah, they... my mom's here and my brother. Okay, Yeah. Cool. Um, I guess, what's one of your favorite, what, what's something you can do when you come back to Spokane that kind of reminds you of childhood? Is there any... I mean, Get a Nanaimo bar. Do you know about those? The what? Nanaimo bars. Mm -mm. You don't? I don't think I... I Okay, they're weird. really from Canada. I thought they were from Spokane. You could yeah. get it at Lindemann's. Well, Lindemann's doesn't exist anymore. You no. can get it at um, Huckleberry's. You can yeah. get... Oh, and Rocket Bakery. 
I've learned to make them myself, but I used to, the first time I came to Spokane, every time, the first thing I would do is go get an Nanaimo bar, which I thought were a Spokane specialty. Mm -hmm. But it turns out it's a Canadian thing. And there's like, Canada's mad for Nanaimo bars, but it's made its way to Spokane. And then, so anyway, yeah, it's a, it's a kind of Spokane thing, really okay. a Canadian thing. So that's what I do. How do you spell that? And it's like the island off the coast, the British, um, yeah. I mean, the off the coast of Vancouver. Okay. Um, all those little islands. Um, N-A-N-A-I-M-O, Nanaimo, after the island, Nanaimo. <laughs> And how many how many shows are you doing? I'm doing two shows here on Saturday at four and eight. And you're you're taping them for? Um... I'm making a comedy special. Yeah, I'm not.